NerdsReviews.com presents Nerds Talking, the podcast. Yo, we talk about lightsabers, stunning your TV screens, what you want to stream, everything beyond your dreams. Want to talk about movies, sports, or even politics? Go ahead and tune in to us, we'll give you all of it. Whatever you debate, next box of PlayStation, Marvel the DC, Mac or PC. Terra flops when the movie drops, gigabytes, chips, RAM, no matter what it is, we got all of it. Welcome to the show. Nerds Talking, the podcast. Welcome to Nerds Talking, the podcast. I'm here with Carlos. Hello. Johnny. Hi. Hugh McCord. What's up? And I'm Lafayette. And uh, we are going to cover some uh, some awesome uh, topics today because one deals with religion. Um, another one deals with your childhood crush, mainly your celebrity childhood crush. I think everybody had at least one and uh and other other topics as we move along here on nerds talking the podcast remember you can reach us at nerds talking at yahoo.com if you have any questions maybe some topics or maybe you want to be on the show maybe you've met bigfoot and you can tell us all about it maybe you are bigfoot you want to tell us you're real all right let's start off uh everybody here saw the netflix uh it's another true crime type of show like the Cecil Hotel one. This one is called Murder Amongst Among the Mormons. Among mm. the Mormons. Among the Mormons. And the Mormon religion, man, it is um, very interesting. Very. In- if you guys ever seen the South Park episode about the Mormon religion, have you guys seen that? Mm-mm. It's. I, think so. it, I mean, they basically make fun of it. Oh right? yeah. It's, yeah like yeah because from beginning to end because the the, uh, the creators the creator. of the show are Mormon. Or Mormon. Yeah, or were I'm Mormon. Sh- yeah. I'm sure they're not welcome anymore. <laughs> yeah. They grew up in Utah and uh, <clears throat> they, uh, yeah, the whole Mormon thing. And of course, they did the the Broadway play, um, uh, The Book of Mormon, which right. I heard is excellent. I, I do want to see that. Anybody seen that? No. 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 I want to see that. That looks really funny. But Johnny, you, you uh, lived in Utah for a short time. Yeah, did like, you uh, have any run- months? Did you have any run-in with them there, Mormons? Or is it something that um, is very prevalent in Utah? Very much so. I mean, um, alcohol, for example, when you're at a restaurant, you can when you get beer, it's three point two percent. So it doesn't matter what brand, ever they regulate their alcohol to three point two percent, and then they're strict on. Like, I can't order two beers. I need to finish the one in my hand, put it on the table before they bring me another, before I even can order another one. Like, mm. it, it's very funny. And then Sundays are, it's a ghost town. Like, everything is closed. Nobody works. Um, in Salt Lake City, it's really clean up until a certain point. I would say a good estimate's like 20 blocks in any direction from the temple. Just clean. Everything's really nice. And once you hit that 20 block range or 25 block range, you're going to see a strip club. You're going to see uh, magazine stores, uh, you know, things like that. It gets, it gets dirty. Uh, Are there train once. tracks 20 blocks away from the. No, no. You just look for the, the magazine mean, my, store. My question is what's a magazine store. It's where they sold porn. I don't. Okay, no, I know, I know. It's just funny to hear someone say a (laughs) magazine store. Right, this is you pick up your comic books every week. (laughs) Magazine store. Yeah, Uh, I like that. That's AKA, you know, porn store, liquor store, and so forth. Um, But but you know, the hypocrisy is if there's a big national event there, then then anybody can buy anything they want to because I've covered I've covered events and. Yeah, all bets are off. If if you if a, if an organization has paid a, a sum of money that's bringing in a lot of tourist dollars or whatever kinds of dollars, bets are off. Oh yeah, what, like, what the, do you like mean the bets winter are games? Off as far well, as I'm just saying, like like uh, X well, Games, like, Winter Games. Yeah, or you know, like Sundance. Yeah. You know, Sundance, which is it there? there you that's in Park City, but yeah, those are not the same rules in Park City, for example. But they wouldn't be. I'm just saying the, right. you know. A convention, for example, might have different rules within its convention because Utah wants them to come to town 
paying, you know, with lots of people paying lots of money, and they they're going to be able to to some degree dictate a different kind of rule, maybe pertaining to their convention, if it's big right. enough. Well, I'm going to assume that yeah, none of these are taking place in Provo. I mean, isn't Provo like the hub of Mormonism? Or I think they no, have the biggest church there, but the temple is in Salt Lake. Or the... Oh, Salt Lake. Salt and yeah. were you ever approached to convert to Mormonism? No, when you oh, go yeah. to, I took a little uh, tour of uh, the Salt Lake temple and Everyone was really nice, but they were obviously doing their mission, you know, because they had the name tag on and where they're from. And uh, it was interesting, you know, because uh, the person that uh, approached me was Japanese. And so her English was kind of bad. Uh, I didn't perfect. know. Like, it, it was like they were outsourcing their tourism That's perfect. or something. <laughs> That's but perfect. it was still like, a, I mean, it was really nice, really clean. Um <clears throat> But, but yeah, I mean, I've only heard of things like about Utah about how clean it is and nice and mm -hmm. and well taken care of. But this Netflix show called Murder Among the Mormons is you learn you learn a lot about the religion if you don't know about the religion, and you learn about uh, Joseph Smith and um, his um, wild story about the religion and how it you know how it started it came to be um if you don't know basically joseph smith uh what year i don't know what year it was was it only 160 early... or 70 years ago right like well, i was gonna early, say yeah the 1800s yeah probably the early to mid 1800s he finds a box with some golden plates in it that he basically translates the word of god and it's the basically the new testament of jesus and how Jesus was, um, Jesus that came to America, basically. You know, I think that time, 18, let's just say 18, whatever, 18. 23. No, 1823. Okay. 1823. I think people will believe anything religious wise, or they may fall into a trap of this guy did this. Oh, I believe it. Sure. I mean, he's a trustworthy person. And you just, you know, you'll go along with it. Now, Mormonism isn't as widespread as, say, Catholicism, and especially not uh, Islam. But in America, it's prevalent. I mean, there's a temple near you, I'm pretty sure. If there's a, a Latter-day Saint, then there's Mormons near you. Have you guys had Mormons come to your door before? I used to play no. basketball for a Mormon league. Did you really? What, was did. it? Is it when you were in Utah or elsewhere? No, this was uh, when I was in high school. Oh, okay, okay. So when I got deployed to Utah, I mean, yeah. you were you were a number one draft pick. Uh, like, <laughs> they or they already scouted you. <laughs> yeah, but BYU is nice. pretty competitive. So very nice. Yeah, yeah. Just... When you went to Utah, they're like, "Yeah, Johnny Lee. Yeah, he's coming that way, fellas. Try to draft him the third round. There's only two rounds. Don't worry, he's good." <laughs> um, I used to have a Mormon guy come to my parents' house, and he was really cool guy. And he'd always talk about basketball. I remember one time he played basketball with us in front of the house. And he was always chill. He only did his whole preaching thing the very first time. And every other time, it's almost like he knew all oh, these neighborhood kids are just gonna they just we're gonna hang out a little bit and play some hoops. And he was dressed too in the white shirt and the tie and the pants. And but he he wasn't ever pushing like, let me read this passage before we shoot some hoop. It's almost like let's shoot hoop first. Maybe I'll bring up the J man. <laughs> like, <laughs> but first, let me show you the jump man. And uh, so you know, but I, it's every Mormon person I've ever met, they are super friendly. You know, they're not pushy. Um, they're 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 fairly friendly. They're you know, other people that come to your door like the Jehovah Witness, they're a little bit pushy. You know, they're, yeah, they're they haven't had pushy. that either. You haven't never had a Jehovah Witness come to your I've door. Had, I think they get close and they feel something and they go. They feel something. That, that one, that door. Let's go to that one. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Everybody said, man, Carlos, you've had a Jehovah Witness come to your door. Yeah, but they weren't, they weren't, I wouldn't say they were pushy. They gave me their pamphlet, the, the tower or whatever that the thing. Tower. Know, the tower. Yeah. No, they're not pushy either. And then it was like, cool, thanks. And then. Yeah, but they want to read you the Bible when they come to the door. I mean, like, you're like, ah. and then they want to keep going and they're like, you know this? And you don't want to tell them until like 20 minutes in, oh, I'm Catholic. Oh, sorry to bug you. And then they leave. 
Like once they hear that word, they just walk away. They're like, oh, we're out of here. But um, as for the Netflix special, basically, it's about an individual. I don't know if um, everybody's pulled up some info Mark on Hoffman. this. Mark Hoffman. Mark Hoffman claims mm-hmm. to have found some basically lost scripture or even just notes and journals of Joseph Smith. And others. And, and people, others. People yeah. who knew Joseph Smith. Yeah. That basically debunk the religion or throw it off course with um, really a crazy story about the white salamander. But that's not even the main part of the, the whole documentary. It's the fact that he will try to mastermind the whole, I'm going to kill this person and this person, and I'm going to try to fake my own assassination. And everyone's going to fall for it. And I don't know about you guys, but after the first two episodes, I was, uh, I was, I thought the church was behind it all. What did you guys think when you guys saw, you know, the f- first two couple episodes? I was fooled. I was absolutely fooled. I did not see it going where it went. And I was in, to your point, if that had been the Catholic church, they would have squashed everything. They would have bought everything. I was amazed the church allowed it to go as long as it did published what they published allowed things to go public that that especially the the catholic religion i think would have just buried instantly it would never have seen the light of day i was shocked that 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 uh the hierarchy of the mormon church didn't buy everything that came their way even if it was what it turned out to be still i was just shocked that they let any of that go public which made them look silly you know the white salamander is this just made them look like it was, you know, that Joseph Smith was an illusionist and it was magic and it was tricks. It made the church look stupid. And I, yeah, I mean, I was yeah. amazed by that. And I definitely did not see what happened in episode yeah, three. Yeah. Johnny, would, you know, would he, you also... what's, fu- what's funny is uh, he might not have gotten caught had he not left the fucking receipt at his house. That, with oh, another yeah. name and w- with the, the title of the company, like engraving plates, you know. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny and that, that was their only clue. And then that led to bigger and better things for the, the prosecution. But uh, yeah, he could have gone on for a while. Um, he's the best. Very master interesting. Forger. Yeah. He's the mass considered maybe the best forger ever. Oh, it's ever. crazy. Yeah. His uh, forging ever. skills. Yeah. And Carlos, were you fooled after the first two episodes by this individual that basically faked his own assassination? attempt no i did think that the head of the mormon church at the time i remember his name george something or other i thought maybe he was behind it i'm like you know trying to stop the letter the white salamander letter even though it was already out there and any other stuff that the guy was trying to sell i thought for sure it was the church behind it you know maybe not the church directly but somebody deep in the church was trying to stop this stuff from coming out I mean, it was really, I mean, if, if all this was true, it would have damaged the church, you know. It would oh, have yeah. rocked it oh, at the core, yeah. for sure. And I thought the same thing as you, that nobody at the head of the church was responsible. It was almost like a um, a lone wolf inside the church. was like, I'm not letting this shit come out. I'm going to take care of it myself. I thought the same thing. And the fact that he would basically almost blow himself up to cover his own ass just that's that's commitment you know he was actually considering killing himself he was either killing himself or he was going to use that bomb to kill one of the other guys and they talked about it in episode three so he he actually was trying to kill himself which he tried again well i don't know if he was i mean he told that in the interview with that woman that he was thinking of committing suicide but i think that car bomb was intentionally made so he wouldn't die just to make it look like he was a target that's what i think because he successfully killed two people so if he really wanted to commit suicide he could have just hugged that pipe bomb and it would have been over just was it a nice it, little killed, hug but he killed three people in the end mm. no two no two no, wasn't it two, two at the office and then one at uh, a house no. car bombing at no. the house one, no, at the one, one at the office only one, one at the office okay and um you know I think he also, well, I think he killed everyone, not just to, um, not just to, because, you know, they probably would have found out those people that he killed would have found out this shit's all fake. We're paying this much money for what? 
but I think it was also to almost uh, enhance the value of that information. Like this is so valuable. People will kill for it. Now you should pay me this much instead, you know, cause he needed money badly. He was, he was drowning and just owing this guy and that guy and spending like he was Bill Gates. You know, there was nothing in those last set of journals though. He hadn't had time to forge them. Oh yet. yeah. You remember that was, was the other part. Yeah. There was nothing he, in there. His whole plan was to write almost like a, a whole new Bible in a sense. Right. And it didn't happen. Johnny, you killed him. Go. What? What? <laughs> what? Say, say again? No, uh, you know, what's funny is I've seen enough uh, Dateline and whatnot to kind of figure it out after two hours and, and Hoffman wasn't being interviewed and, uh, and you only saw right. like clips of of him speaking previously. Oh, yeah. Like you, sure. you can kind of figure it out. Or like when you're watching Dateline and hey, the person in the orange jumpsuit is really pleading their case. I, I think <laughs> I think they're going to be guilty. I think they're going to be guilty. So yeah, my my thing that was Hoffman. Um, like you said, you only saw him like you know little clips here and there, and he seemed like the most important person in the whole thing. But yet no one was going after him at first. Like oh okay, he's in the church. The church, like Hugh said, the church was almost wanting all the information he had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, they wanted to prove it wrong, of course. And then when they came back, the FBI said, all oh, this is real. They're like, oh, my God, what do we do now? Who's this white salamander? And how do we take this magic and convert it into religion? I mean, when I saw the white salamander part, I was like, oh, my goodness, this must have been the worst thing to ever happen to Utah since they found out there is no jazz actually playing in Utah. It's just the team name. I wonder what in the aftermath, like what happened to the people that verified that said this is definitely genuine, a, a genuine document. Uh, even the scientists who tested all the paper and whatnot, like how they're their legitimacy. Teaching, they're now is, teaching at the community college. Well, right. you know, look how look how far they went to find out about the legitimacy, the the cracked ink. You're like, what? That's like super scientific Batman stuff. Like you guys went fully like this doesn't have cracked ink. Well, this does have cracked ink. Oh, these aren't the same then. You're like, wow, like that is like way that's digging deep into finding the truth. But I was thinking the same thing Johnny was, you know, a couple hours. Well, after the first episode, they didn't talk to the guy at all. You know, Mark Hoffman. So I was thinking either he became a victim of a bomb or he's in jail. That's what I right because I, I didn't have any prior knowledge of it. I don't remember right. And then I thought it was, I was a kid. I thought it was funny. I I may be wrong about this, but the whole first two episodes, every time I talked to his wife, it said Mark Hoffman's wife. But in episode three, I swear they changed it to Mark Hoffman's ex-wife because now we know he's the guy. So now they changed her title right. to ex-wife because I could figure if they would have done the opposite, people may have gone. <laughs> Oh, you know, maybe he's the ex-wife, so she left him. So he might still be alive. You know what I'm saying? To your point, Johnny, I thought he actually I thought actually he was dead. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I thought, okay, episode three, he's gonna either have killed himself or been killed. And then they reveal the first guy was not him. And I'm like, all right. Well, he's the second person. No, it's not him. You're not her. You know, it's, it's not him again. I'm like, so what? What the hell happened to him? I thought, I thought actually it was the, I, I don't remember his name, but he was buddies with uh, Shannon. Uh, the ball guy with the bow tie. Yeah, yeah the, Shannon. Yeah, cause, cause he had, he, yeah, he had said something and they had asked him, did you have anything to do with it? And he said, and yeah, absolutely no way. And then his eyes started twitching. Coincidentally, yeah. I was like, oh, that's a fucking murderer. You better run because there's well, the, a bomb under your chair. Well, the one part I went at the very beginning when it started, because that's who they talked to first. Yeah. And when he, the guy asked him a question, he's like, I won't ever talk about that. I'll never yeah. reveal. Don't make that. me like, answer that. Yeah, don't no. make me answer that. I won't. I'm like, ooh, do, what is that, though? What is he talking about? Right. Like, do, do his voice right, though. Can you do me a favor? Oh, I know. Can yeah. ask me about that, please? Yeah, he, yeah I don't, don't want to make him out to be a hero. I don't want to talk about that. I just yeah, think I don't. He was a very nice gentleman at first, and then he <laughs> made these bombs, and we killed many people. Wait, what? I mean, we didn't. I don't know. And then he, he turned out to be like a Playboy type dude back in the day. Oh, he sure was. Remember when they were like, 
Mark would go drinking like a madman. I would, and I love when he goes like, Mark would be drunk all the time. We'd go out. I would, I would never touch alcohol. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd <What>? watch. I'd watch. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I know watching somebody get drunk in Mormonism is like watching porn. You know. Oh my God! I saw him get drunk last night. What? Yes, yes. It was wild, dude. He had two beers and he had a look on Johnny's face. He's like, I've never seen that porn. I was like, oh, that's not like it at all. I've never yeah. seen that one. John was like, I've never seen that porn before. <laughs> two girls, one cup, watching yeah. what? Magic, un- <laughs> magic underwear. What are you talking about? <laughs> two girls, one cup. Oh man, that's a movie. I think I saw that. I remember yeah. that movie. <laughs> it, the finale was wild. The finale just was the fact that's that framed he- on Johnny's wall. <laughs> the fact that he did it, and I mean, like I guess give me more of these documentaries on Netflix. I love these things. Like, I want to see, you know, the next one that comes about. If it ties to things like religion, it's even more impressive because, you know, like, like Hugh said, most religious try to shut it down. They're going to make sure you never find out about anything. Mm-hmm. And if you do find out, they've paid the victim off so much money that yeah. it just goes away, you know. Um, but yeah. This this one was excellent. I, I I was I was intrigued because of the Mormon aspect of it. You know, if it said if it said murder amongst you know Boy Scouts, I might watch it still, but I won't be as intrigued if it wasn't for the Mormon <laughs> aspect of it. You know, the best part for me was the end where they showed his updated photos because normally I'd be like immediately looking to see well what's he look like today, and they showed right. it. It was great. <laughs> it was great. Like he looks like a nut today, like a, just a nut. Like his face t- is like. Yeah, I could tell you when I said murder amongst Boy Scouts, Johnny's face lit up and he was like, what is that? And is it on another streaming right. channel? Yeah. <laughs> I would subscribe. He looked because- nervous to me. I don't know. He's like, oh, shit, they found me out. Oh, my God. I, I was just thinking to myself, well, they're obviously going to be really good at tying knots and shit, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they tie up their victim, but it's in a, a hex knot, which is. They tie oh, you up. They shove it. cookies down your throat. <laughs> Yeah. Cookies. That's Girl Scout. That's Girl Scouts. Oh, they can join too. Together, they're together. They're together. Do you get your Do you get your little murder badge for your sash? If you... What do, What do the Boy, Boy Scouts <laughs> sell you? Do they Do they sell? I thought popcorn. the Boy Scouts start. Oh, they sell popcorn. Yeah, that's popcorn. trash. They sell you memories. The Girl Scouts. Are, oh, well, <laughs> wait, wait. Were any of you in Boy Scouts or some some type of Boy Scouts? I was in the Cub Scouts. Okay, got Cub Scouts one. Johnny. Not me. No, you were in the Johnny's army. In the real Boy you were in the Scouts. men's army. Boy Scouts. <laughs> I, I remember uh, coming back home from basic training and I was in my uniform and a Boy Scout troop like walked by me. I was like, huh, that's adorable. You can tie knots. <laughs> I can murder you, little Whoa, man. Get the what? fuck out of my way. <laughs> wow. Wow. How about you? Were you ever part of something like that? I was. Or? I was a Boy Scout, but you I was a Boy Scout. Third level, yeah. I was yeah. a Beaver Scout. So, <laughs> yeah. I was a beaver scout. I was a Canadian thing. I was a beaver scout. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said something else altogether. Nah, I, I scout <laughs> yeah, beaver. I, I, I still I, scout I, beaver. I thought that's what <laughs> yeah. you were going for. Like, I was in the Girl Scouts, but I ate too many brownies. You know what uh, I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man, I always found the beavers with no hair. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's a beaver scout. It was kind of funny. This, the way that they started every beaver scout, we sit in a circle. They give us a little piece of woodchuck, like maybe two inches, and then you'd have to go place it in the beaver's mouth. It was so odd. <laughs> it's, very, it's very odd. And yeah, me and my brother were in the beaver scout. I think I was in it from like four to six years old. And uh, it was, yeah, very interesting. But um, yeah. Hey, one another thing too, Johnny, real quick about when, when you're, do people ever, when you were in uniform or people always say to you, Thanks for all you do, or like something to that effect. Like people said that a after lot. 9-11 for sure. Uh, okay. before 9-11, it was just like get out of my way, dude. <laughs> like you don't make you don't shit. Matter. Like, yeah, you don't matter. I see in GI Joe. After 9-11, like the first person to say, uh, you know, thank you for your service. I didn't know what to uh what to say. Like I had my army shirt on. So, thank you for your service. I was like, my pleasure. I was like uh, Chick-fil-A. My <laughs> pleasure. Uh, you had no idea. Oh, yeah, I had did. no idea. You got, yeah, yeah, to, you, you, to you, you held the door open for and you just had no clue. Yeah. You should have told him, you should have told him if shit goes down, get behind me. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> well, the, well already, I, I bring it up because I was in a Burger King and this was after 9-11. This is probably like, I don't know, like, um, 2013 or something and this two guys were in uniform in line and the lady went up to him and said thank you for your service and he was like for what he's like for all you do and he's like 
just straight face looked at her and goes, all I do is sit at a base down the street all day. I don't do anything, lady. <laughs> you know, that, and that's I started one of those guys that like just kill the dreams, you know? Like, oh, it, but it's not that. I just, I was like, wow, the truth. It's like, <laughs> like, like Bar- Barkley, I am, I'm not a role model. Fuck you know your I, kids. And you know what I think it is? <laughs> I think, I think that type of guy has always been on a base. Never done. He's like done. He's never been to oh. on tour. You know what I mean? And that dude is bitter. Bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bitter, but he's also like, like, lady, I haven't done anything for your freedom. I want to get out of the army as soon as possible. Like, I'm just waiting to, you know, like I go back to base and sweep the floor. Whatever it is, you know, I got to do at base. He's probably one of those dudes who's pissed he didn't go overseas. He probably did want to shoot at someone or shoot someone. I just thought I just pushing paper. I just was wondering how military people react to always being thanked for their service. And some people maybe just some members of the military just going for what? Like, you know, like, you know, I. Yeah, well, those people are bitter. I, I eat it up because I love attention. So <laughs> if someone thanks me for my service. It was you been like, oh, man, you really want to thank me? Can you pay for this for me? Can you pick it up? <laughs> I mean, you played you were a star in a in a Mormon basketball league. So, you know. You you know what attention is like, so it makes sense. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I go to yeah. a temple today, they show oh, you a no. picture to me. I'll tell you your know. story about visiting uh, Vietnam. Weren't you like the tallest Vietnam Vietnamese guy there? So you're supposed to oh, hell of I attention thought, there. I thought for sure they would make me emperor. I don't think that's a thing, <laughs> but they were like, I walked into a bowling alley, and I mean, obviously the tallest person there, and. I'm going to say the best looking one too. So they were like, all right, all right, this dude, get ready. So I grabbed the ball and everybody stopped. There's only like four lanes to this uh, bowling alley. Now are the lanes shorter because people are shorter? No, they're just, uh, it's just, it's just a harder sport. The reach, the reach. <laughs> Leave that question. Are there snakes on the like? How is it harder? Just bamboos. And the pins like, move. The pins. Yeah, move. I threw my oh, ball yeah. down and it blew up. Oh wow! Because oh, wow. the booby oh, traps. Were there were there landmines? On? <laughs> wow! <laughs> they left them there from Nam. Like, right. Great. Wow. So I I, th- I went to. Go I didn't know the it was in a rice paddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enough round eyes. Enough. Yeah, you started it. You started it. <laughs> so Did they release but, tigers before you? Threw the ball. I don't know. Like, how much harder was it? Okay, go ahead. Well, the, the the lanes were so slippery. I threw the ball and I just sl- scrubbed, hit hard, and then everyone went back to their their whatever they were doing. Like, all right, okay, never mind. mind. Forget him. Yeah, I, we, we we thought we saw our savior, but then I look up and there's a fucking video replay just of me scrubbing. <laughs> I, like, I love hate it. this place, but I love their technology. Oh, the best part about that story is, I don't know if you remember this, but us three, you, Carlos, we went bowling one time and you got so shit faced oh, yeah. and you did the exact same thing. You ran on <laughs> and you just fell. You, you must have been in the air three feet and fell flat on your face trying to throw the ball. I remember you threw it backwards one time at me. You were so wasted when you <laughs> when you went to go back with it, and I we were just oh, laughing. Dude. We were That's laughing our do. we were laughing our ass off all night. Well, that oh, must have been God. the same night he tried to chuck it down the lane like a baseball. He did. That was the same oh, night. Oh my God. Yep. He threw it down the like a baseball. And maybe you should stop playing. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't go bowling anymore. Were we at Country Club Lanes? Country Club Lanes, man. You were shit faced. No, nah, oh, that wasn't God. me, dog. That was somebody else. <laughs> Another <laughs> Vietnamese guy we know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, too good, man. Too good. All right, let's take a break here on Nurse Talking the Podcast. And for all the Mormons out there, you know the truth now. You're safe. No salamanders out there to ruin your life. So um, from Johnny and all the people in Utah, God bless. All right, people. Nurse Talking the Podcast. Hi there. I'm Megan. And I'm Danielle. And we are Crime and Roses. We are a true crime and bachelor franchise recap podcast. Yeah. We're both. We are two Georgia attorneys watching and recapping all things Bachelor just for you. So we're talking Bachelor, Bachelorette. Bachelor in Paradise, Winter Games, Summer Games, all the games. Basically any show that ABC comes up with and forces us to watch. And then we'll release a true crime episode connected to what we've seen on the show that week. So if you don't like true crime, we have The Bachelor. And if you don't like The Bachelor, we have true crime. And if you don't like either... We're probably not the podcast for you, and that's okay. So, if you're into one of those things, both of those things, come check us out as we combine our two favorite things into one-stop listening shop for you. 
So find us on your favorite podcatcher and on social media at Crime and Roses and email us at crimeandroses at gmail.com. Bye. Love you. Mean it. Welcome back to Nerds Talking, the podcast here with Carlos, Johnny, Hugh, and I'm Lafayette. And now we're going to talk about the royal family. All right. You know, the royal family is interesting because we've all grown up knowing about it. But when did you learn that the royal family has no actual power? Did you even know that? Did you think they had power? Over the, I did. Over in, you did. Okay. You, you thought, so you still thought till this well, day they had... No, I don't know if I thought that they actually. Well, I don't know. Okay. So until, until my <laughs> wife started watching that watching that series, yeah, the I crown. realized. She, yeah, I realized she has no power. Yeah, like, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. no, don't bother coming over. I, the one scene where she was going to go, the queen was going to go to Africa when she was younger, and two of the guys from Parliament were like, "No, no, you're, no, no." And she's like, "I need to do something. I'm going." And she went, and and they were like pissed <laughs> off, and I realized she has no power. It's very true. Johnny, do you want the power of the royal family? Uh, he has it. Oh, does he? Wow, How do I have it? Wow. In your own house? Because I have not no the power? king of your castle? No, <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> because it's all fake and all for show. Yeah, well, it's interesting. It, it, they are government celebrities. That's the funny part, is that the government, they basically... What if America had representatives? Say, let's say George Clooney and Sandra Bullock were our U.S. celebrities. They weren't movie stars. They were just, you know, uh, put out there to do the charity and go to other nations. They're just almost ambassadors for our country, but they're celebrities. And that's what they are. They're just celebrities. They're just, here's your schedule. Go do all this charity. Go do this. Go shake hands. Go take pictures and this and that. You actually have no power. You just have a, a fake title, but we have to keep that tradition going. You're paid by the government. Mm-hmm. Taxpayers pay you to be basically royalty slash like celebrities in a sense. That's the difference. That's the biggest difference that are paid for by the regular person in taxes. Yeah. And that's that would, that would piss me off to no end. That I'm yeah. Thinking, it's not cheap. I mean, no, you know. no, their lifestyle is ridiculous. And, and that's why I think over here, people are infatuated with the royal family in, in the United States because, because the royalty aspect of it. But nobody really cares. They, over here, they only care about the celebrity aspect of it. Over there in England, man, it is. People Tradition. eat it up. They love it. They, they think it's amazing. Um, I don't know. I from from my perspective, I could give two shits. Carlos, do you give any shits? I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Is I guess what I'm trying to say because I recently Pierce Morgan was arguing with someone about it, and he said, "Don't talk about my royal family like that." I, I, I'm sure a lot of British people look at it that way. That's our royal family, but. What do they do? I mean, you are paying their salary. You are paying for them to live in these big homes, to travel yep. Yep. in these planes. And you you live, you work for them. Basically, that's their power. Their power is to make what they call the Commonwealth pay their taxes. And that's how they get their money. That's how they get their money. They're living off the Commonwealth. And that's ridiculous. Why do you bother having a prime minister and a parliament if you have a queen who's supposed to be in charge I mean, think about it. If there was a war, if a war was to break out, is a queen going to get on her white horse, put on her suit of armor and charge to the front line? Mm, well, no. I mean, the thing about the royal family, like you said, I mean, it's all it's all for show. So what's the point of giving a shit if like, for instance, Harry, you know, has, has, he's no longer part of he's part of the family. He's no part of the royalty part of it, I guess. The monarch, the monarchy. Who gives a shit if he's labeled prince? Only thing he's going to miss out on is basically the taxpayer's money that he collects as a, well, as his employment. But his mother left him millions of dollars when she passed away. He's okay. But wouldn't you, I don't know if you guys all saw that interview that Meghan Markle had with Harry, but the fact that he says that my, my dad and my brother are trapped and he's not wrong. They're trapped in... They're they're almost uh 
a slave to the system, like they have to do what they're told. It's funny. They all live in a fantasy bubble is what it is. Mm -hmm. They don't want to they, escape that bubble. They don't want to leave that bubble. If they do, then they become, then they themselves become commonwealth. And it's funny that they refer to people who are not royal commonwealth or just the commoners, right? And what makes them a royal? I mean, if they bleed Earth. and I bleed, guess what? Same color blood, man. Yours doesn't come out gold or sparkly or... Well, I mean, that's you know not what, what royalty is. It's just tradition. That's why it's still there. You know, I think England wants to hold on to that. They want to hold on to... We still have the royal family. And that's why it'll never go away. They just want to hold on to it. The United States has never yeah. had royalty, you know, so... um I mean, other countries that have royalty are actually people in power. Saudi Arabia, mainly Middle Eastern countries. Those people are still in power. But England, it's just for show at this point. Because what are you going to do? Turn the, um, what's the palace they live in? The Queen. Oh, lives in. There you go. It's, it, I mean, it is kind of a museum, but that's all it would turn into. Here's a museum. Oh, there goes so-and-so. He used to be the prince, and now he works at Starbucks. You know, um, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, I think it's really interesting. Like you, like you said about um, Pierce Morgan, who quit his job. That he don't was talk encouraged. about the yeah. Well, don't talk about the royal family. Like, like really, man. Like, well, he's a piece of trash. He's a he piece just of took trash his, anyway. but he just took his ball and went home. Was all he did. He just didn't like being called out on his crap. Oh, he never does though. He's a piece of shit. No, oh, for sure. That guy no doubt is. about it. Did you guys ever watch when he took over Larry King? I couldn't stand it. They give him, no. they give his, he gave Larry King's job to him. And I was like, why did you do that? This guy is horrible. He, but he, horrible. he works for the equivalent of Fox News in the UK. I mean, I it's the, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, same, yeah. it's the same business model, same yeah. idea. He's the same as Hannity and those kinds of guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, he's that. I mean, do you, do you guys love the fact that the Queen gets to knight celebrities? Because I think that's funny too. But well, what does that mean? Who cares if you're knighted? Who it would be hilarious mean? if you get knighted and then do, do, when, do you get to sit at the round table is that when there is about? a war sir elton john you're first to battle he's like oh <laughs> shit i don't i don't uh, speaking, let speaking, me call benny and the jets <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which is there anything sillier than the uniforms they wear like they've ever been in anything like i was looking at a, a, a photo earlier the the uniforms at the like what's his name the uh number two harry or whoever the hell oh. You know, number two, right below the queen, Charles, a bunch of medals and stuff. And it's like, oh, that where fella, did, where yeah. did you earn those, Char Chuck? Chuck, where'd you I mean, earn those? They were probably in the military. I know, uh, they are. They Harry to, was in the military. They, they have, have to do they some had, time at, yeah, at they war they, in a um, war situation. I don't think so. No, I mean, they're, they're they, going to be in a war situation surrounded by you know, like the best troops, security, and, you know, and troops. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. so that's my kind of my point. I mean. They, you know, there's a lot of them, and I don't think he saw a lot of battle. And I don't no, think it's, no, I, I agree. I, I feel like the medals on his chest. It, I, I remember after 9 11, I saw like an interview from I think it was a general in the Salvation Army, and I was like, What the fuck is this? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I didn't even army. know that was a thing. You know, the sad part is that army is still better than the royal family's army. <laughs> So, no, army. Yeah, I, at least I, I can get a used, I can get a used I rose, Guns and Roses t-shirt from them. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, I, mean, I think if they took a vote, like in England, they said, okay, this vote is to abolish the royal family. They it wouldn't happen. You know, I think people would say, you, you would just waste our taxpayers' money on something else. Why not just keep them around? You know. Well, I, well, I mean, there that. there is some tradition to it. I, yeah, you yeah. know, people want to hang on to that, but I mean, I would compare them to maybe like the Kennedys in the United States. I that's mean, that the, family is like royalty yeah. here. That's and, the um, closest that we had in the United States when the Kennedys were around, and um, and and JFK was almost celebrity status back then. You know, not just president, but also celebrity status. But um, Hugh has a theory on. Well, no, I just, I was going to say that I've been to the UK a couple of times and I loved going there, but I had no idea that there are things besides just the tradition of, of the Royal family. I think there are, you know, there's a degree of racism there. 
and it's oh, more the more prevalent than I had any idea of. And you could argue that's a theory of tradition that going back to the way that it used to be, you know, like an element here in the United States would like to have. Yeah, I, and I, I've always said this about countries in Europe. Most, most people are the same culture. They're the same, you know, there, there's not a melting pot like it is in America. So when you step into Germany, Belgium, so on and so forth, and you're out of place and they know you're out of place you're going to be pointed out on that. And in England, man, boy, oh boy. About you, Johnny. Um, <laughs> we went into Vietnam and went bowling. Um, it's it's uh, Blacks and especially Middle Easterns. Oh, boy. Like, the, in England, they're not high on Middle Easterns coming over to their country. Who make up more than 50% of the population. Yeah, which you know, is By crazy. an estimate that I read, 50% no, you're not, or more. You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, but that's what it, that's how it is in England. Like I said, it's different. I I pointed this out when I went to Portugal. You didn't. See, it's almost like you didn't see anyone but the Portuguese. Even if there were tourists there, you wouldn't you wouldn't even notice. It was like ninety nine to one. But, and that's believe me, racism is prevalent there. It is. It's not like it's not. When she says that he told her that somebody in the royal family said. You know how how black are your babies going to be? I have no doubt that was said. No doubt, I do you know, too. So, but I also feel like it's it was probably said to by somebody that's you know not very high in the family. But it's still I, I'm not saying the, not the queen said it, but still no, 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 somebody no, no. I know, it. somebody I know. said it. But at the same no time, I kind of feel with that whole comment that was something that Harry may have brought up to Meghan, and she was like, "Oh my God, that's the worst thing you could ever say." Oh, but it was said by the janitor. But still, he works at the palace. So let's make it bigger than it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, dude, I think it was a, probably at some function where it was some yeah, level. It, probably, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. said something. I mean, it like, could have been his. Could have been his dad. You know, who knows? Johnny, did your dad ever ask you what color your babies were going to be? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to, know how to answer that. Uh... What? what? <laughs> oh man that's like that's the funniest thing like what that's color your right baby's there. gonna be like oh man i'm hoping a human color that kind like you I'm don't gonna... have kids but what is funny i mean like you know, I was how do you know for, that i was there for the birth well yeah none that you know of but <laughs> but you check that mailbox every father's day huh <laughs> <laughs> boom. fingers crossed right, boom <laughs> fingers crossed uh, no, i i remember during uh, uh a high school class uh, i think it was cps or whoever does child support came in and talked to the class and they were like yeah we hand out the subpoenas and shit like that on father's day i'm like damn it's cold well and they were like <laughs> their argument against that will take care of your kids i'm like i agree but damn like i, I felt like they were kind of bitter do you also think the royal family sticks around because uh this is not no this is a whole different thing uh megan markle right she's part of the family she's like oh I, she came off like i don't care about this stuff anymore i don't want to be in it but somebody like kate sense. somebody like kate you know she grew up wanting to be in it wanting to be a princess she, wasn't she a duchess before that i mean I she wasn't so. just a she didn't work at starbucks no right. no she wasn't a commoner like Megan. no she wasn't a yeah. she was a duchess i mean it's just that's what i'm saying i think people over there are enamored with it they're enamored with you know, maybe one day I'll be part of that royal family. And um, I don't know, man. It's I if I was a taxpayer, would I be upset about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Hugh says yes. Carlos, would you be upset yeah. about it? I don't think I would because I don't know, because it's like we've been saying it's such a tradition over there that I don't think I would. I would unless I was one of those total right wing guys like you find here in the States. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I'd and be like, hey, it's the queen, whatever. Johnny, you are upset about it, but how upset are you? I don't, I don't think I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, like Carlos said, it, it is about tradition. I mean, think about, I mean, we discussed it before, but, uh, you know, when people started protesting the national anthem, I mean, that, that was part of tradition. It's still a part of tradition. And people get very upset when you mess with tradition. So I, yeah, I wouldn't I mean, be you know upset what, about it. You know what they could do is how about instead of having the tax people pay taxes for their employment, they sell so much merchandise. Just let them make money off the merchandise, man. Fine with that. 
Yeah, I wonder if that's just, I think that's his money just funnels right back to the fur. Johnny's laughing because he doesn't, he has a t shirt with the queen's face on it. He's like, Do you really? I, I, I'm thinking like, because she's getting pretty old. Soon she's going to be a bobblehead. Just, <laughs> I don't think, um, like you said, if I grew up there, I wouldn't think of I wouldn't think of of it as out of the norm. Like eh, they're there and we pay taxes for them. And if people, like I said, people would say this, they would just say, well, if we cut them off, we'd still be paying the same taxes to go something else. Like we wouldn't, they wouldn't lower our taxes. And it's true. They probably wouldn't lower their taxes. But but maybe the taxes will go toward a social service that people actually need. But they I'm need is, the royal family. For what? For weddings on TV. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know who needs the royal family? The tabloids. They need the royal family. They just who are they going to put on the money? Like that's yeah. a, oh, that's kind of a in big Canada, right. the queen's on the money. What is Canada going to do now? Put Wayne Gretzky on the money? Come on! I said the royal family would still exist with or without the tax dollar, just like the Kardashians exist here, just like I, the Hills. Exist actually, I here. do think Carlos has a point. If they cut them off, they would still exist because it's to sell shit off merchandise they sell stuff off being moral uh being celebrity status of course they would of course they would yeah all of a sudden you'd see uh what is the brother's name it's harry and william william all of a sudden he'd be hawking products on tv bill <laughs> bill and harry they would have shows like keeping up with the royals yeah i mean well, that'd be a well, great show bill and, hank. Bill, and hank bill and hank <clears throat> good old the bill queen and be harry. like no out of my bedroom out 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 yeah it's like you can get yourself <laughs> some old spice here yeah? like i don't know i the royal family, like I said, for us, we just from across the pond, we just see it as as uh, uh, what do you call rubbish? Good old rubbish, silliness. Yeah, but over there, man, it's hardcore stuff. It's uh, I just think it's funny that the they're just they are government celebrities. That's what they are. People that don't know, that's basically what they are: government paid celebrities or servants. I guess you can call them servants. Or you, you know, have you guys watched The Crown on Netflix? Some Maybe. of it. Is it good? I heard it's great. I think that's what uh, the white you want to know the history of the royals, I guess. Okay. But Johnny? It's funny how they treat... Uh, Johnny, go ahead. Have you watched The Crown? Maybe watch The Crown. No. Is that the one... Does Is uh, Elizabeth Hurley in that one? Mm. Uh, Elizabeth Hurley? No. What? She's in The Crown? I'm watching. No? No. What's no. her name from... Uh, Kip... Keep forgetting Jillian. What's her name? Jillian um... Anderson. Oh, Jillian yeah. Anderson is in the she won a Golden Globe. That's for, right. For playing Miles. Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in another really good Netflix show. But what? Her. What's funny is that how they treat different. I, I I do think the level of the racism in the royal family is is really high. I mean, if you want to give it a level, is it fuck? Is fuck a level? You know, when you tell somebody they're racist, that's fuck. I guess fuck is the highest level you could be, right? Because <laughs> the way they treated Megan, or the way she says they treated her, because she's half black, compared to how they treat Prince Andrew. I mean, this guy was friends with uh, Weinstein. Epstein. Epstein. Yeah, so this guy was, you know, hooker, young girls, whatever. But he kept I don't I don't know if he has his title anymore, but he kept the income. He kept the security. I mean, he still has all the privileges of the royals. But yet they were really willing to cut off Meghan and Harry and they just decided to leave. But just the way they treat different family members. And maybe it's because Andrew is in the, you know, in the family and Meghan is an outsider. Right. Maybe that's why. But still, I mean, that level of racism in that family is. At so the fuck level. Total what is level. if I say racist as fuck, but then I say, man, that guy's racist as shit. Where does that go at? That's like below right fuck. under fuck. It's right below under fuck. fuck. So okay. Fuck, and what's below that? Shit. So oh man, racist he's as hell. racist. Hell. Racist as hell. hell. Oh, racist as hell. hell. Okay. And then yeah. and then if I tell yeah. you that, fuck. um, let's see, he's racist as Donald Sterling. Where does that one go? I mean, that's pretty high. That's, that's not high. That's not as high what? as what? No, shit that's not fuck. that high. No. Really? His, you don't his, think that's no. as high? His girlfriend's black. All all he said I mean, is, you know, well, she, just, she wasn't black. She was like half Asian, wasn't she, or something? Or? No, she was I'm mocha. Sure she, yeah, she was mochaccino, but she. I don't know. He was pretty racist. Though. No, that's not. No, he's under hell. He's, mm. Okay. But I love well. the people that say, oh, I can't be racist. I got a black friend or something. I got an Asian friend. I got Johnny's here. But those people. 
they have, you know, those friends. They're not racist to those friends, but they're racist to everyone else. Have you, you know what I'm saying? Show? So that pretty, doesn't mean you're not racist. Think, you just pretty have pretty a nice friend. I yeah. think they're racist to those to those people as well. They just take it behind their back. Sure, right? They just take sure. it. I also think they take it in their face and they just take it as a they do as, as a, like as their a joke. Cause, cause they, hey, yeah. we're buddies. We can joke like that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we want to. Because they want to be there. Because the power is there. Yeah, yeah. It's That's true. Because the latest, the latest in this before we take a break is: Have you guys heard about the latest from the Miami Heat basketball player Myers Leonard? No, he was streaming. <laughs> and yeah. he said he called a uh well who are they whoever's... beginning with a k basically yeah. he said uh bike bitch but instead of bike it started with a k and it referred to jews uh and then he put it together he explained it off that he didn't know what that, that he that said was i don't know what that word meant and he, then why did he, you say he, it <laughs> you know i would if i was him i would have said uh i meant dyke but didn't and, Michael Jackson get in trouble? Oh, Michael Jackson got in trouble for putting that in the song. Give him a shitload of shit for yeah. saying, um, "He me, said, kike me, don't you black or white me?'" Yeah, yeah. Kick but me, in that instance, me. I think Michael <laughs> used it just fine because he was using it as a racist thing, like "kick me, kike me, don't you black or white me?" Yeah, He's he saying, was. Don't saying, treat me like a different like, person. Like, treat me like a human. Yeah, yeah don't treat so me Michael like Michael Jackson. High five. You don't treat me like you would treat the, basically the Jews. Like, don't slander us because we're different. That, that's what that whole song's about. The whole song's about that. Oh, great song, too. But I just feel like, are you, I mean, are you offended by things like that? You hear Myers Leonard say that. that yeah. That's a bad ass word. I understand that. But what I mean by, are you offended by, are you going to stop everything you're doing to give two shits about Myers Leonard saying that? Are you just going to like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'll hear worse today walking around. But you know, or I've I, heard worse from my friends. But I never heard that word until I heard it in a Michael Jackson song. I never knew what it meant. I never heard it, like I said, ever before that song. So this guy, I don't like this. I don't know who this guy is you're talking about. He he's said, a, I'm just he's not a, hearing about it. He's a power forward for the Miami Heat. Oh, there he goes. Miami, I don't give a shit. So he said <laughs> something and I don't give a shit. If I saw the story like on Yahoo, you know, the news page and the headline was what's his name something Myers Myers right? Leonard Myers Leonard says blah 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 I'm going past that story I don't give a shit nothing I'm, just, I'm, I'm clicking said... on it because you gotta you gotta see if you drop the n-word or not and then like oh. then you, you, <laughs> you know what, what happens like yeah 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 you're right you're right I, I clicked on that I just wanted to see what he said and then I want to know the racial slur he said exactly yeah. and I clicked yeah. it because as a basketball fan like oh Myers Leonard said something oh Myers Leonard spoke <laughs> like and then you kind of find <laughs> out he's like hey he's playing he's on twitch streaming and he's like ah you blank bitch you're like oh and like for me I'm like oh um I don't know. I feel like video games don't yeah. really count. Yeah, I've, was... I've threatened many little, <laughs> That's little what I'm children. Saying. Like, <laughs> like I've asked he, them for their address. He so said that. Murder he, them. He, like, he said they, that yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. I now imagine you Fortnite a long time would, ago. Those, would you be more uh, like, would you be more like, like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. If like you were famous and you're like Johnny just said, that, like you stupid little kid up. I'll, I'll rape your face <laughs> like holy shit like it's more like shock like what the hell did he just say and i bet you nobody would be offended not even rape victims would come out and go my god no, why would you say I such mean, a I, thing I'm, I'm sure there's a small group out there that would protest or some shit but no i dropped the n-word and then said the rest of it Ooh. yeah yeah <laughs> i just so i don't trouble. know I, I i look at the way they treat mel gibson i mean you hear the tape that was <laughs> it's kind of wild yeah but those are <laughs> drunken those are drunken rants right but it's the not point, that i just that's not the point though i mean it's still what you really are thinking oh yeah i mean drunk, well, no, this afraid. Is the right. thing is drunk, afraid. what i wanted to know too is was he talking to somebody that was jewish because i i assume he was it, it, 100% you, no. has to do no, with he was race, talking so. to a cop he was talking to a cop in the front seat Come, what no 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 i'm talking about i'm not talking about mel, mel gibson. gibson oh yeah, no 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 i'm talking about the basketball player like he's talking to some player some kid he's playing on twitch video game whatever it is is he oh, referring? so you think he was like giving him like a friendly, like a friendly? No, no, reaction. not friendly. I'm saying is that is was he saying that because the person was Jewish? Like, why? Well, would no, he I'm not saying that. Slur? I mean, friendly in a way. Like, say I'm playing Johnny, and I know I'm playing Johnny, and Johnny. No, does no, he said it. Are you Asian? Fuck. No, he, he said it like kind that. of. He said it aggressively. Oh, okay. The All thing right. is, was he referring to a person because they're Jew? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's very. 
don't get me wrong. He, people are going to be offended by that word no matter what. I'm not. I'm not Jewish. I don't have the connection to it. I hear it and go, oh, man, you dumbass. Like, like I'll move. I'll, I'll move past it. But you, you're a dumbass. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to last very long. I, I think if he had I don't the N word, so it would have been over for him. I don't think he could have played in the NBA anymore, to be honest. He would have been. How, how do you even know that word if you don't know what it means? So it's not a word you would just. That sounds like a word. I'll just say that. How would you not know? How do you know? How do you know to write that if you don't? If you've never heard that, it's not like some bastardization of some other word that's you know that you just changed a letter. That's a word that's completely derogatory toward Jews. And yeah, that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like the way he used it. I don't know. It's interesting because it's like, is anybody in this room offended by that? Myers Leonard using that, or is it just like, do you look at it as, oh, what a dumbass? You if, know, if I were Jewish, I would no, be. No, for I'm sure. saying you're not Jewish. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I'm also you... not black. So when someone uses a word that, that is derogatory toward blacks, I'm not as offended as somebody I know who might be black. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm not necessarily offended. I look at that as like, oh my god, like what an idiot! Like what? Like I had friends growing up in high school that, you know, were Asian or anything, anything but black, and they use the N word all the time, and I'd be like, right, when talking me? to their peers, even and not necessarily derogatory, but like, what's yeah. up, my yeah, yeah, my yeah, like, ninja? like I have a friend still. You guys know this guy Ryan. He still says it to me when he talks to me. And yeah. I'm like, you're still saying that? You're like 38 years old. We don't live in the neighborhood anymore. You're Filipino. <laughs> well, I met I met an uh, an an Asian fella, and every other word of his mouth was the N word. But he was yeah. saying almost like kind of gangster, right? And then yeah, 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 yeah. When I met this guy, before I even asked where he lived, mm -hmm. I knew exactly where he lived. And then I asked him later, "Hey, where are you from?" He said, "Oh, I'm from Elk Grove." I said, "I knew it." For some reason, the Asians in Elk Grove think that they're gangster and they got to talk like this all the time. And this guy was like in his mid 30s, if not 40s. And I can't believe he was talking like this. I'm like, uh, what is wrong with you? So every time it, I'm with you, whenever I hear someone say that or say something derogatory or something, I just shake my head. I'm like, you fucking idiot. At a certain age, you got to get past. I mean, I understand when you're young, you do dumb shit. You do dumb shit when you're young. But grow up, man. Yeah, no, it's like so I'm saying. I mean, but I'm also the type of person I'm not offended by much of anything because I, I also I also look at things as they're just words, man. I don't give a shit what you say. Like I don't because care. you're racist as fuck. Not that as could shit be or too, hell. No. Just that could fuck. Be you're top level fuck. racist. I'm actually Donald Sterling yeah. racist. I'm fucking up there. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm just I'm not offended easily by things of that nature because I can easily just go like, dude, whatever. You one person, you're a dumbass. Move along. I don't really give a shit. About like, you're not going to affect my life by the words you say. You're going to affect your own life, I guess. Like, to me, that's how I look at it. Myers Leonard just affected his personal life. But if anybody out there is offended by him saying that, it's never going to affect your life. Now, if anything, he brought to light that word. Like Carlos said, he didn't know the word till a couple years ago. I don't know when Johnny knew that word even existed. But... Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure I heard it in a movie or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was always derogatory. If it? anything, he's brought light to a word of, hey, you shouldn't use that word. You know, because I, to be honest, compared to the N word, do you ever hear the word kike ever? Honestly, let's just be honest. Do you no, ever hear it? it? Like I said, the only time I've heard it is just now when you mentioned this guy. Yeah, I and never And Michael Jackson it. song. Yeah. I've and, never heard this word and before. I'm pretty sure you've all heard people say, you know, jokes retain, referring to Jewish people, typically about money. Like those are like how the stereotypical like Jewish type of thing, you know, oh, you're, oh, you're cheap. Cause you must be this or, you know, like that's typically the jokes about, you know, Jewish people. It's like money. They're money related. And I never, ever, ever have heard that word used in public ever, ever. But you know why? Because that word is used typically from one Jew to the other Jew. Because that I was, I that bet either. you would come across so, that no, no, in the East Coast. I mean, yeah, there, yeah. There's more yeah. bigger communities. Uh, yeah, that but way. so that word actually is a derogatory word for immigrants that came to America, and they were known as almost like lower class, like like uh, Jews in a sense. And then they use that words towards them. 
And it was you basically saying it's more of an orthodox thing. They use it more than it's 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 more of a uh, like a Jew on Jew crime. That's how that word is typically used. It's not it's not widespread like we know the N word. You know, it's not like um, you don't hear it. people that aren't Jewish typically say that word. It's it's like it's basically like <laughs> calling another Jew. You know, um, lower than you. Like uh, you're a piece of this in a sense. Like you know. That's just what it is. That's why we don't hear it. We don't hear it. If anything, again, I think Myers Leonard stupidly brought it to light to show people, hey, you shouldn't use that word. Like that word is not something you should ever, ever use like in any way towards, well, a Jewish person, of course, but just in general. But again, if Johnny called me that word, I'd be like, uh, that does like what? Like. I wouldn't be offended if Johnny called me that word because I'd be like, dude, that's out of context. You can like, you shouldn't use it, but like, what does it like? And Johnny's called me many, many mean things through my life. So Sorry. I accept your apology. So there you go. That's our take on um, the royals and racism. They're totally quick <laughs> to <Wait>. racism. <laughs> real real, real quick, uh, Elizabeth Hur Hurley is in a show called the Royals and then Jillian oh, Anderson she, is in the crown. She is in uh you're right. She, she is in the Royals. That's right. So the crown is what you want to watch. If you want to know the history of the Royal family. Yes. And, and I think the Royals, the Royals is what you want to watch. If you want to see look at a hot 50 year old. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think it's all fictional, right? The whole Royals thing is a fictional show. It's not really based on uh, like the crown is. Right. I think Hugh, any final words? No, I don't. I was going to go, but it will be a tangent that will go for decades. Ah, decades. <laughs> yeah. That's, this is where we insert the SpongeBob voice. Three hours later. Yeah. You <laughs> were still going. All right. We'll take going. a break here on Nerds Talking, the podcast. Uh, we have, uh, we'll have uh, one more fun segment for you. So just stay tuned, locked in here on Nerds Talking, the podcast. Comic Book Wednesdays, every Wednesdays here on the Nerds Reviews Network, where Lafayette and Carlos talk about comic book movies, break down your favorite superheroes, and tell you to visit your local comic shop every Wednesday, here on the Nerds Reviews Network, Comic Book Wednesdays. Welcome back to Nerds Talking the Podcast. I'm here with Johnny, Hugh, and Carlos, and I'm Lafayette. And um, growing up watching television, or well, I guess television, because we didn't have social media back in before 2000, what eight maybe. Um, who, uh, when you were growing up, who was like your crush watching television, and you were like, oh my god, like uh, hot stuff right there johnny go ahead you can you can start off with ted dancing but we'll go from there <laughs> <laughs> for for tv it was just about any girl punky brewster <laughs> fucking um so lil moon fry yeah what a name it's a great name isn't it what was the, a the robot one? Oh, oh small wonder small, small wonder, wonder. Was it Vicky? Yeah. Vicky? right yeah but uh, yeah. as far as movies i think the major one is Tamlin Tamita. She was in uh, Karate Kid 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Super cute. She just burst onto the scene. Um, I'm looking her up. Yeah. I and thought then, she was um, the best. And then she was in the Joy Luck Club. Mm, 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 mm. Really pretty. Was she back? Is she, is she the one that came back on Cobra Kai? I think both yeah, of them did, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is. The older yeah, woman. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. older woman that came back in Cobra Kai. Yeah. Recently, she was on Picard. Uh, as okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's evil. all I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So you still want to reach out and say what's up? You know, you know she's not busy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ted Danson's still alive, too. Uh, Carlos. Uh, man, when oh, it yeah, came to TV, there was yeah. uh, uh, Batgirl, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curves on her, man. She was, man, a Coca-Cola bottle for sure. But that um, was kind of weird to watch because when we were watching them, they were already 15, 20 years old, right? Maybe more? Because when did the original Batman? Oh, yeah, 60s? yeah. No, you know, no, she must. Yeah, when I was, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of weird yeah. to, to see the reality. Like, because I had a crush on the, the smallest Brady. 
but then by the time Cindy, yeah, I thought she was kind of cute, and uh, I don't know, she was older, and I saw like a recent picture. I was like, whoa, what is that? Ah, what is that? You are so, <laughs> what even a is human that? anymore? What is that? <laughs> oh man! Maybe I should uh, rethink this. But. Uh, no, but but man, yeah, uh, Yvonne Craig, man, she was she was hot. And then uh, was, I'm, I'm like Johnny, man. I uh, Punky Brewster was my television crush, man. That she was, I thought she was hot too. I okay. watched that and, show every week. Yeah, it was. That was, Moon that was a good show. And then uh, Hugh, uh, let me guess. Hugh, he's a little bit older than us. So Hugh, let me guess. Mary, Mary Magdalene. Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> and the sad part is you didn't, you couldn't see her. You could only read about her. And you were still like, I bet you she was hot. She had a lot of guy friends. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Kirby. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I had to look like just now, like what shows like was I watching? Susan Day. Remember the Partridge family? Yeah. Yeah. Susan yeah, yeah. Day was hot. Mm-hmm. Um I think Gilligan's Island was in the 70s. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mary no. Ann. No, Mary was it? Ann. Oh, really? Mary Ann. Over Mary Ginger. Over Ginger. Oh, Over no, Ginger. no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, this one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. I think she just but, passed away. But it away was so too. weird that she would be wearing heels in the sand on a deserted island. They would have, yeah. you know, both of them would be wearing like heels. Oh, that's true. Like, so you but, found that weird out of the whole show. <laughs> That yeah. Part you found. yeah, that was the part I found. All the celebrities yeah. that showed up and left, but they got left. The Globe Trotters were there. I think Batman made it showed up one time. But you were weirded out by she's still oh. wearing the heels. And the and the chick from the Mod Squad. Okay. Mod Squad. Yeah. Who was married to Quincy Jones? Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, Barbara Eden. About? I dream of Jeannie. Oh, dream of Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie. Yeah. She was automatic. She and I met Jeannie. Automatic. I met Jeannie like 20 years ago when I was doing camera stuff in LA. Okay. And there was another one, um, uh, Annette Funicello. You guys remember her? Um, oh, she yeah, she was from. Um, she was in the Mickey Mouse Club, but then she yeah. was, did a bunch of like. Uh, uh, she was all right. Can't be like summer. Are you movies. saying you had? Are you saying you crushed on her? But um, no, for me it was. Um, no, more like who's the um, Charles in charge? The oldest one, oldest daughter. Scott um, Baio. So what no, the Nicole, Nicole Eggert. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he was transgender and scott bale and scott bale oh when you um, see well what about her now though no well not now i mean now i mean she was on baywatch and she was great mm. yeah and then yeah, um yeah. happy days i always thought um really? joni was uh oh. pretty Joni cute. was kind of cute yeah i thought she was um but same as you guys it was punky brewster it was um small wonder um it's just small wonder was actually kind of creepy when you think about it it's a creepy ass show. What was he doing with that robot at night? He kept her in the closet, right? And her dad, his dad made her. This is, man, it was kind of creepy when you think about but it. But he made her because they couldn't have another child? Or was it because he had a vasectomy and couldn't reverse it? I don't know the reasoning. There was a know, family guy what. thing on uh, Small Wonder where it was like the, the dad was a really good guy because he like didn't give in to his temptations he <laughs> that's would, why he, he shut her down <laughs> and like her mouth goes open he's like no nah, not today <laughs> horrible horrible um then you got the rick and morty episode where he totally abused that robot he if, if you were uh, on that robot <laughs> what there was another show that was like uh i dream a genie around that time I can't bewitched? Remember. bewitched bewitched there we go yeah yeah she, she was, was a cute she was yeah, absolutely yeah. cute bewitched. some of those charlie's angels were i had a oh uh, yeah yeah charlie's well. angels you look back um, though now they're so skinny oh my god it's like they're yeah they're sticks like six this wide yeah uh, let's see um golden girls <laughs> <laughs> betty white B. Anyway. well when she was young yeah, she was. Oh, another one is um from uh Wizard of Oz. I always thought she was um, really. Dorothy. What's her name? No, but Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Man, she had a messed up life. I feel that's just she died young and she looked double her age. She looked horrible. What um, about more recent ones like Saved by the Bell? Oh man, Kelly Kapowski. Yes, good pull, buddy. Good pull. Saved by the Bell. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Now we just sound like just old nasty people <laughs> perverts man i remember jacking <laughs> off to say hey, seriously when you think about it we're like hey what about this one? Oh yeah 
I remember that one was great. Oh mm. man. <laughs> I was never I was never late to class. <laughs> right? But you know what's funny? Then then you would for me, I would want to see what their evolution was in acting in a sense. Like, oh, what's Tiffany Amber Thiessen gonna do? Because we only know her as this character. Then she was on 90210 for many years. You're like, oh, okay. And so on. That's that was always interesting to me to see what they did after when they like grew up or what was the evolution of their career. And did you still have that when they got older? Or were you now, when you're older and they're also in their 20s and 30s, you're like, ah, that, you know, now I just view you as an actress. I don't really, that doesn't stick anymore, that whole thing. I would say, I mean, it's tough to say because, you know, probably other, other than Hugh, like I haven't seen many celebrities up close, but. Uh, no, I just want I me mean, when you watch like them on television. No, well, I mean, my point is like, I, I was in a, the city walk universal mm-hmm, studios mm-hmm. and uh i saw Alyssa milano and okay. this was probably another know, 10 good years pull. ago good job on that one who's and the boss? uh she was stupid beautiful like she was doing autographs or something like that but unbelievable like even closer in, or in person it was intimidating i couldn't even like look at her so because she was so hot did you just yell you're the boss no you're the boss <laughs> she's like what the <laughs> uh but that, that, again another good one uh, who's the boss yeah that's what reason it was a reason to watch the show like for some like for, for sure. younger boys you're like i want to watch who's the boss i just even the mother <laughs> like i want to watch the show <laughs> <laughs> she was hilarious but yeah i just think when you watch a show now and you're like i remember her from you know what uh like say full house when they redid full house fuller house you almost watch it for nostalgia but also like Oh yeah, remember what she looked like as a kid? Like, you know, like right. Then you kind of like, oh, she didn't age well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but even Solo Moonfry, she has. They rebooted Punky Brewster. Did right. they already yeah. do it, or are they going to? No, they, they already started. Did it. They've it's started. on the Peacock oh, okay. channel. Yeah. Um, and she has a documentary on Hulu called '90s Kids." Or oh, really? Like okay. Yeah. I'd have to check yeah. that one out, even though it's, that was, again sounds like I'm a creep. What I'm about uh, somebody <laughs> mentioned? It, was it Dennis that like he he signed up for Hulu? Was it did he signed? No, he signed up for Disney Plus because of Topanga. Is that right? Uh, that's right. That's what he told Dude, us. Topanga. Because Boy Meets World. Yeah. 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 She, yeah, yeah. Very Boy mature for her age. What yeah, about the Boy. one from uh, what? Uh, one New Year's. French, yes. Yes. One okay, New Year's. Yeah. Uh, one New Year's. Um, Kimmy. I think yes mm-hmm. um he was quiet he's looking them all up like God damn it. <laughs> who's yeah. mary magdalene and then who what's this i had yeah. to remind myself who topanga was oh, Wait, are yeah, you yeah, talking yeah. about uh winnie cooper there you winnie, go winnie cooper winnie kimmy is cooper. from full house she's an annoying neighbor oh, kimmy, oh, yeah. i was like kimmy, kimmy Gibbler was all over kimmy, kimmy, was all over kimmy. you like that dude good old kimmy <laughs> um yeah i just you know i i guess i find it interesting to see what what they're doing now if they even continue the career or even what they look like now where you're like oh i remember this person and even if it was uh again if even if it was a male actor where you're like oh man that show was really good whatever happened to that guy you look him up and of course he died overdose or some shit but um it's uh, that's that's the interesting aspect of it too not you know even though, like I say, we kind of sound creepy, but um, Carlos. Well, what about now, though? I mean, what, when you look at actors or actresses now, do you go, man, that's that's a good looking dude and you or a good looking gal, you know, whichever, you know. What about now? Do you do you, I don't say crush on anyone, but do you still go, man, if only. No, I don't. My thing is, do you watch movies or television for that reason still? Let's Depends say who's in it. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say, for instance, um, gal gadot wonder woman let's say she had a tv show would you watch it because she was in it primarily or would you watch it because it looked like a good show or it could be both i think if i was in my late teens early 20s i'd probably watch it because of her name because she's in it okay yeah yeah you now not so much no now so not so much more <laughs> reviews like how how good is the the show itself and then i might be more inclined same Johnny. with other same with other big name actors though. Yeah, you know? I'm the same as you. Uh Johnny. I don't know. I feel like any answer I give from the mm-hmm. heart makes me yeah. sound like a total creep. Yeah, that's true. And I don't want to necessarily 
say it, but mm-hmm. I, I have a friend okay. who feels this way. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Tell us You're about your friend. But I mean, friend. If, if you hear, you know, like I'm sure when you guys heard that uh, Elizabeth Berkeley from Saved by the Bell, if she was like going to do Showgirls, like interesting. I was all over that. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I wouldn't mind seeing her boobies, but then you know, current actresses now, like I would, uh, Alexandra Daddario, she was on um, Baywatch. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Dark haired one. She was on a couple of the rock movies. Like, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Um, she did a movie recently, and I, I heard that she might show boobies. So I watched it. So you signed up. <laughs> I know that his friend did. His friend. Did. Your friend. I mean, yeah, your friend, friend Lonnie G. Yeah. Yeah, super good old Lonnie guy. G. That dude Lonnie G's an ass. Exactly. Well, there was like, like, <laughs> so like Femke Jensen. I'll watch something if she's in it because I think she's gorgeous. And the older she gets, the I mean, she just retains her beauty. I'm, I'm kind of like you. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I don't watch things nowadays because somebody might be. I, mean, I I'm more prevalent to watch it if a of a, a male lead is in it, and he I know he's a good actor. I'll probably be more, you know, let's just say let's, if they announce True Detective season five with Matthew McConaughey and he's re- playing the same character season one, I'll watch it. But if they mentioned, you know, whatever, name of really famous female actress at the moment, who's, uh, I don't know, who's the biggest? Sandra Bullock. Let's say, Sa- yeah, let's say Sandra Bullock was season five of True Detective. I'm not watching because of her. I'm watching because it's True Detective. Right. I, 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 my my creepy friend heard that uh, Alexandra Daddario shows her boobies in True Detective <laughs> season one. She does. You're correct. You're right. You know what? I rem- you you're right. Good old. Yeah. Lonnie. You have a creepy friend too. I know Lonnie G. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Lonnie. What's up, Lonnie? Uh... <laughs> What's up? I mean, you son of a bitch. Quit tricking me. <laughs> What's and Halle Berry is another one that I was, was going like... to say. Halle Berry a, in Holy person. Shit. She, she came into a golf store one time and I was like, what? And everybody, everybody in the whole store is like, what the? And she was dressed down. You're like, wow. Like, okay. Jessica Alba's good looking in person. Jessica Alba. Jessica. Yeah, that Jennifer was my Lopez. celebrity crush for a while. And who was the girl that was in uh, the under whatever, the uh, vampire movies with her? Kate Beckinsale. Another one. Oh, oh yeah. Or are you yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, Resident yeah. Evil? No, no, Kate no. Kate Bex- Although Kate I met Bex- the girl from Resident Evil, she was g- cool. Very shit. pretty. Oh, that's and cool um, as shit. Oh, I forgot her name. She does seem like she's really Mila cool. Mila Jolovich. Jolovich. We took a photo. Go. She was like right here next to like, and I'm like, oh well, well. I can stay, I'll stay here for a while. But as far as like male celebrities, man, they they look like they do on film. Uh, most, of the time, most of the time, most of the time. But yep. you know, you know George why? George a good-looking man. Brad it's Pitt's also, a good-looking man. It, it Depp looked the same. It's yeah. the um. It's also the makeup aspect of it. That's you what know. I'm talking about. That's what it That's is. What yes. Like, you know, the Hollywood thing is men age great in you know Hollywood. Like, you know, George Clooney age at, great just in general. But George Clooney at seventy will still be like, oh, "That's a handsome guy." Still, you know, absolutely. You know? And it'll be different man. for women because women. I mean, it's the downside is makeup. If women yep. never wore makeup, you'd be like, you'd probably have a different, almost more of appreciation for like, I guess, beauty. And now we sound, now I sound horrible. <laughs> I, sound, I sound like a turtle ad. But you know what I mean, though. You know what I mean? It's almost like, wow, without makeup, well, you're just amazing. Like you should, you know, but then again, now again, I sound like a dick. <laughs> just no matter what yeah, I that's, say, that's not a stretch. That is, it's, not. it's better than sounding like a creep. Oh. Yeah, and it's Take it from Johnny's me. friend. <laughs> Johnny's friend Lonnie. Goddamn Lonnie. Let's let's take one more break. We'll be right back here on Nerds Talking in the podcast. Nerds Talking every Friday on the Nerds Reviews Network. Subscribe, download, turn on your notifications. We'd like to hear from you what topics you want us to talk about. Or maybe you have a great idea and you want to join the show. Reach out to us at nerdstalking at yahoo.com. That's Nerds Talking every Friday. Back to the show. Welcome back to Nerds Talking, the podcast here with Hugh, Carlos, and Johnny. I'm Lafayette. And now we move on to a topic that I think we touched on before, but um, we have a new, new cast of characters here from when we talked about this before. Last time was myself, Carlos, and former bandmate, um, Dennis. So, Does he still listen to all this? He hates like, us. Does he hear it when we talk shit? He, Let's be honest. Who on this panel 
actually listens to the show. I show do. of hands. You don't have because... to talk. Just show of hands. Like, you know, this is, I'll, this I'll be... verbal. It's a verbal. I listen to some. I know, but they might not want to say, hey, I don't listen. Let's... Yeah, but you I... honestly listen every week. I'm Just... a narcissist. So I have to hear. So my... am I. I listen to this like five times a day. It's funny. I'll listen. Well, I only listen to it on Fridays when I'm driving for work, but I'll be like, man, that guy's so good. He should be on like major, like he should be Spotify. Like somebody should Why doesn't he have up. his own show? Why doesn't he have I'm his own serious. show? And then I'm like, the, I... there, it, it kind of depends on what mood I'm in. Like if I oh, want to okay. listen to an idiot, I'm going to turn on the flat earth episode for ah. sure. Yeah, yeah. If I, I like want to hear someone like... say, oh, you got to have an open mind because I, I... <laughs> shut the fuck up. So like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, but it's funny. I like how you go back to the same episodes. Like I want to feel smart today. Flat earth. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's like if I want to feel skinny, I just get a fat friend. You know what I think is the thing about what you'll do is you listen to the, all the episodes Dennis is in to go. I feel good about myself. Oh, that's makes me you. Have a lot of confidence in my performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking. neutral, so I don't know about that. I'm, I'm Ooh, neutral. About take everything. a listen, boy. The early episodes are rough for listeners. They are. That's why if you look at the, <laughs> I think episode ten, the title of episode ten or eight, it says the reboot episode. We didn't like how the format was beforehand, so we changed the format to what you have today. Yeah, yeah. I basically told Carlos on a conversation, hey, we're not having any more like question and answer. Or, There's no format. What do you mean? We're just going to talk any way we want. Shoot jump from in, the hip. Shoot from the hip. We'll have topics, but don't hold back and, you know, talk about, you know, as we did in number two of this one, racism and uh, early episodes made me kind of sad i'll be honest with you <laughs> but yeah but no but i listen yeah i, li- I listen to uh, everything from taco tuesday to comic book wednesdays to nerd oh, talking yeah. and you know and i and i listened back just to go ah that one wasn't that great or oh, oh that, you know what that was a good segment or oh oh lonnie could have been on this one he would have been good here. he's very because this is a creepy episode yeah, <laughs> yeah so. but let's go to uh this is a wait, topic wait, wait, let's, let's about. go back to it real quick so who listens Johnny said well, he listens, but he, does, he listen. listens to the old shows. Well, he wants. I mean, to I'm catching up, so I, okay, I don't he's listen. catching. I haven't up. listened to any of our, you know, any of the ones that I've been in. Oh, because I totally edited you out because you sound like a bad Kermit the Frog, so I had to get you out. I hope. Yeah, you what do you listen to here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Hugh, yeah. do you listen? I Hugh, have you listened di- a little bit, but I still don't have. I, my day sucks because I don't, I have horrible service and it will drift out. It'll just go right out. And then I have to, at some point, try to pick it up again. Ah, we're not on radio. Sounds like uh, the professional no. Gilligan's Island had a better chance of listening than you do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, <laughs> no, but that's soon to change. Don't bring up Gilligan's way, Island, damn it. It's soon to change. And I'm just going to say, don't get Metro ever. Oh, Metro. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, our topic basically is nerds. The definition of nerd. Your take on a nerd. What you what a nerd was to you when you were younger. What a nerd to you now. What like, what's the perception of a nerd these days? And uh, it seems like it's cool to be a nerd. But go it ahead. Is. Anybody jump in. Go for it. Use that movie because I think that was a pretty decent definition of what nerds used to be. Revenge, Revenge of the, the Nerds. Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and in that movie, of course, which is a that time period, if you were gay, you were considered a nerd. Today, you know, my daughter, none of those, you know, all those kids are it's not in, are not nerds or not, you know, or are, but there's no real definition anymore, I feel like. Everybody's cool you know, or you're not, but it seems like you're not cool if you have, you know, anything, you know, if you have negative opinions about anybody else because of, you know, who they are or who they identify as or whatever. And, you know, and back in, in the Revenge of the Nerds days, it feels like, you know, if you were smart, you were a nerd. If you were gay, you were a nerd. If you were a musician, weak, weak, you were a nerd. If you were an artist, you were a nerd. But do you think that only pertains to when you're younger? Because see, we're older. We don't we don't view it that way anymore. Is it just that? Is it just getting older? Where almost like a nerd is now a nerd is just a way of saying it still was the same back then. But it's like you, uh, like oh, what are you doing? I'm reading a book. Ah, you nerd! Like yeah, no, like that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. My daughter doesn't feel doesn't see that anymore. Yeah, 
exactly I'm not taking I'm it saying. from me. I'm taking it from her. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. For us, it was different growing up. Like we, like you said, we used it as the kid that didn't play sports. Ah, oh, he's a nerd. Or, or the, you know, whatever that person did the opposite of what we thought was cool. Like, oh, you like, you listen to rock? No, man, I, I you're a nerd. Like, oh, like automatically? Yeah, you're a nerd. But yet nerd was also taken as, you know, oh, I'm really good at, you know, like I said, math, uh, nerd. I, I, wish, I wish I was a nerd. I mean, I think it had to do with our images uh, growing up as well. I mean, I'll just take Saved by the Bell. Like Screech was obviously a nerd. Um, but, you know, like the, the females on the show were pretty smart, but, you know, you because they were pretty, nerds. yeah, exactly. but you wouldn't call them nerds. So. And you're right about that. A nerd is also an image. It's the suspenders and the glasses and uh, the backpack that's strapped tight to your back that has t- 10 books in it and Oh, that's and that's what older. I'm saying. Yeah. Like a nerd nowadays, we'd we'd call Bill Gates a nerd at our age, but we say it almost in a in a enduring way. Oh, it's almost man. a compliment now. It's a compliment it now. It's different where like it's nerds like nerds talking. The idea was we talked about the upcoming video games and movies and these are what nerds like to hear and talk about. But then as it evolved, it turned into at our age everything's nerdy in a sense like we don't view it as a bad thing it's it's everyone's like carlos talks about bitcoin you know that's some nerd shit yeah but that's the shit we all want to be part of i gotta call (laughs) i gotta call yeah it's what i'm saying that you're a nerd you know i I invest in bitcoin that's some nerd shit oh but but that's smart shit like it's a compliment now. There's no yeah, doubt about it. That's it's a compliment. If, if he makes money. Yeah, yeah. If he then, loses then, money. And then he goes from nerd to dumbass. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and according to him, he'd be uh, dumb as fuck. That's he'd right. be dumb as shit dumb as or dumb as Donald Sterling. But he's dumb, dumb as fuck. <laughs> But or dumb as hell. Don't forget dumb that word. Hell. That's number three. That's third. That's third. Isn't hell worse than fuck? No. no. Just, no. just in a visual no. way. In a visual way. No, because hell is, well... Depends who you ask. It's not even a real place. <laughs> fuck. Fuck is a top level of anything. Is fuck true. is a real fuck. place. Fuck yes. is a real place. <laughs> and you, can be ro- you know what? I just thought about too. You can be royalty fucked. Royally fucked. So, That's right. Royally uh, fucked. This one's for right. you, Megan. <laughs> 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 yeah. But nerds, yeah, man. I think it's um, it's different. Like everybody said. And, and I do think it's just an age thing. I said, as you get older... You don't view people that way. If you saw a guy in your office that, again, you worked in an office environment, dressed nice every day, like nicer than you, every, you, you know it. This guy came dressed super nice and now it's hipster, right? And he's wearing the glasses and this, that, and this, and he's almost too clean cut. You wouldn't say nerd. You'd almost, you'd be like, oh man, that dude, like, Hipsters that's what I'm saying. Hipster is kind of, hipster, that's, you know that's what? A- that's true, actually. Hipster is kind of the new nerd. When you think yeah. about it, I think it depends on what comes out of their mouth. Like if they spout me like technical stuff, like why uh, Facebook is superior and the certain functions that you can get and algorithms, that's that's kind of cool. But if the fucking hipster told me like, oh, dude, you got to invest in like hemp oils because they really bring out the clarity in my mind. I'm like, shut the fuck up, hipster. Like. <laughs> It's true. obviously you're you're gonna be moving to Portland soon. Yeah, it's and it's so true. <laughs> Hipster kind of is like took over the nerd aspect of, uh, you know, how would you? How I would mean, you nerds would it? look at hipsters and yeah, look yeah, down call on them nerds. Yeah, yeah those, you're look a at stupid those hipster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think it's interesting. I do think nerds, uh, the idea is anybody nowadays falls in the category, even if. Let's say the the toughest guy in your neighborhood, but when he goes home, he plays Pokemon with his son. You know, he has that one. He doesn't tell his buddies about it, but he knows, <laughs> he knows how to play it. He knows everything about Pokemon because of his son. Right. And that's kind of like his cover nerd. Yeah, his nerd aspect right there. And if it ever came up, he'd probably talk about it. Oh yeah, I know all about Charmander. You're like, what? Odalay Vato? What? <laughs> like what? <laughs> what? What? What did you, you, <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> Which is what I said, Jeff. You just said that. What did you just what? say? <laughs> I said, Odele Vato. That's what a tough guy says to his tough guy friends. Odele Vato. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, and it's not. See, that's one word that's not derogatory when you say that to a friend of yours. So you can say Odele Vato one, to Odele your friends. Odele or Vato or Charizard. Either one. Either one. I think Charizard might be offensive to people. But um, when to you the white salamander, that's, that's an insult. Well, it's an insult in Utah. I should say that for now on if I mean No, it. white salamander is the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? You said yeah. because you they had me. bombs. Oh, oh you, you tied it all together. Look at <laughs> you. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at this guy. Oh, what was, man. What was nerd. Good job, Lonnie. <laughs> What was he going to call it before the white salamander, though? Uh, white ding a ling dong. No, frog, right? <laughs> toad. He's going to call it a was toad. Was it toad, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And a toad know. came up ding to dongs. me and showed me where the white, the gold plates were. Mm. That would have been better. Is that offensive to a Mormon person if you call him a white salamander? I'm going to try it out now. No, they said they think it's magical. So they, they were. They well, were, not now. That's what I'm saying. No, they, then. Then. They no, were no. Right. Let's say if you say it now, is it offensive to them? Oh. Oh, what I if, doubt if, it. if I Myers doubt Leonard was like, yeah, what a white salamander, bitch. <laughs> people, were like, people were like, wait, wait a second. Oh, I, I saw Netflix. I saw Netflix. Take that back. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, nerds. You guys are all nerds. That's why you're on the show. You're all. I feel like what is everybody your, can nerd out in something. Give me your top three nerd. Like, what makes you a nerd? Give me your top three. Go. Uh. Johnny, my, you're my love for Disneyland. That yeah, like that's a nerd thing. Okay, what else you got for me? Anything? You gotta have three, or else you, you're part of the hipster club. Oh shit! Uh, I, I love no, he doesn't have a beard or a flannel shirt. Yeah, but he drinks like German IPA or some shit and brags about it. Yeah, could you imagine me with dreadlocks? Holy shit! Oh, <laughs> I hate slap the hell really? out of me if you ever see that. So Carlos, Johnny has to think about his other two. Carlos, give me your three. Go, nerds, go. Three. Comic book collector. Yeah, that's nerdy. Toy and statue collector. What a loser. Video game player. <laughs> God damn you. Hugh, give and three. the fourth one would be comic book movie lover. Yeah, yeah. Hugh, go. Give me three. Artist. Artist. Wait, artist. Wait, a theater, you know, actor, theater. I don't think that's nerdy. I, in my high school, it was. Well, I don't really view that as nerdy. I know what you're saying, though. Drama club stuff. Yeah, you're right. Drama club. Okay, what about back, now? Like, that, what about that now? Would, that should have been the, the path that I take. Because if you're a guy, like if you go into theater as a guy, your competition is like a gay dude. Like your co-actor or your right. other actors are going to be uh, gay. So you have other females there. Like you're going to be the Wait, man. So you, you assume that it's all like what you see on this, this is what, what this is what i've heard from <laughs> other actors uh you know on other podcasts that say uh-huh. like they would go to like theater camp and then oh, oh, they'd oh, be the man reason. because because of options you know like that's a good that's a good move though. that's a good move yeah. remember oh, remember how sure. much get, male cheerleaders were made fun of idiots they were yeah. with like 20 hot ass right? women holding them up in this the air still sounds creepy you know? all of this all, like of this. <laughs> All of it sounds creepy. Yeah. Hugh, give me your three. You can be from All the right. past, but give me your three. Well, no, that was one of the three. I so know, I know. You got one. Cry easily. Wow. I do. I have yeah. emotional moments. I don't know that's nerdy, though. That's, that's not nerdy. nerdy. There's another that's more, word that's I got more, for that's you. More, yeah, it's more like yeah. feminine. Oh, it's, I have a derogatory word, but it's it's not nerd. Oh, oh. no, I know I what ju- you mean. I White salamander, Latin, bitch. I, ju- <laughs> <laughs> I, ju- <laughs> I took Latin in high school. That's not that's not nerdy. Yeah, I took Spanish if, and all I learned you, was Odile if Vato. Love, if you love Latin or if you would still quote it or like... You know things like that. Then yeah, for sure you're a nerd. Yeah, Ixlay Pick. I do know. I do know phrases in Latin. So basically, you're not. A, you don't fall in the nerd category. You kind of like. Uh, I was on the outside a, looking in. I was He's wishing was a nerd. nerd. I mean, it's a thing. Like nerdy stuff. You know, like Carlos said, I collect comic books. I play video games. I got comic book statues. I still buy toys and keep them in boxes and look at them and never take them out. Like oh, this is so cool, but I'll never release you out of your package, you slave in a box. But I think what and, Hugh was doing is what you were saying. I mean, it's your age that defines nerd. Because back yeah, in the I'm, day, Hugh, I can see what you're talking about. If you're in band, if you're a marching band or something, you're a nerd. If you were in, no in, in no theater, you were a nerd. I if, think it's still the same. If, but, you know what I'm saying? Bullet, you were bullied too. Yeah, so, no, I think what you're, you said was right. It's 
it's defined by age. I'm sure, like you said, if little kids are calling each other nerds, it's not endearing like we think it is now. It's derogatory. I think now, even I think even in school now, it's still the same as when we're in school. That's what I'm saying. I think it's the same. I think for adults, it's different. I think for kids, let's say you're in fifth grade and you're still called a nerd, you're still going to be laughed at. Oh, she's a nerd. Oh, she's reading a book or she doesn't want to play it with us at lunch or he doesn't want to play with He's a nerd. I think it's the same for kids. I don't think it changes. Oh, no, I think so too because my nephew, I play video games with him. He's 12 years old. He He will call me a nerd, but not like it's a cool thing. He'll call yeah, it to me like he still he's says it like, me. like if he's better than you at whatever video game you're playing and you die a lot, you're a nerd. Yeah, you don't know how to play this. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, wait, you think a nerd would know how to play this? Like, no, no, you're a nerd. But you know, I just, just collect coins and stamps. Nah, that's super nerdy. Wow, oh. you're back in the club. <laughs> you are back. <laughs> wow. I, still have, I still have them too. Congratulations, you our president. Still, you're the president. <laughs> of the club. Wow, I still have yeah. them too. That is amazing. You are a super nerd. They were hey, pennies. Johnny, give me another one because he was in the he was in all the way. Like he's he's certified board member. Yeah, Johnny's still looking in. <laughs> Johnny has one. Looking in. No, I want to be a nerd. No, I I mean collecting uh baseball cards and then I mean I I didn't collect comic books the way you guys did, but I do remember for for about 20 something years I did uh because I, I went to the comic book store with you guys one time and they were giving away a free Captain Planet uh, comic book. You and I was like, not. episode one, or, or you know, mm. this is one. the first one. Yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. Mm. But everyone <laughs> got one when they walked in the door. But... <laughs> you know, did you watch anime as a child when it wasn't cool? Because there was a point where anime oh, was not cool. Yes. And Carlos and I watched a shitload Still of it. And it, it wasn't cool. It only caught fire like in the late 90s, maybe mid 90s. But we watched it when it wasn't cool. And it was nerdy to watch Japanese cartoons. And I feel like it is, still is. No, it's mainstream. It's super it's mainstream. mainstream it's ridiculous. Like, mm. it's, you know what? Anime sold out. Sold out. What? Shut it's up. mainstream. You're out of here. Every, you're out of here. I think. Did you guys ever go to like Suncoast and order a special order one? Oh, yeah. Was oh, there yeah. like after yep, shipping yep. and all that? It was like a yep. hundred bucks to watch some like. I remember going right to Suncoast. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we want to get this certain anime. They're like, oh, it's going to take like six weeks to get here. Like, why? They, they got to draw it for me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so, anyway. All right. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in. Nerds talking the podcast. A bunch of nerds, a bunch of creepy dudes. Um, watch Netflix, <laughs> learn about the Mormons. Cheerleaders. cheerleaders. He was all about the cheerleaders and, and the magical thumb. And, um, you know, oh, oh. Oh. yep, yep. Um, no, there we go. Johnny, Punky Brewster, you're all in for the reboot? Creeper out. All right. Say. All right. That's pretty much our show. All right. So for Carlos, bye bye. For Humacord, see ya. And for Johnny, aka Lonnie G. Lonnie out. Say it in your native tongue, Johnny. You Just son say. of a bitch. Every episode. <laughs> yes. that, was his, that was his native tongue. You son ah, of a bitch. That is his native tongue, exactly. <laughs> and it has to, he has to call me that son of a gun. Um, and for me, I'll see you guys later. Have a good week. Next Friday, tune in. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. Download. Leave us, leave us a review. We'd appreciate it on any platform you listen. Five stars, preferably. And uh, you can reach us at nerdstalkingatyahoo.com. Have a good one. See you later. Taco Tuesdays with Nutso and Chuck the Rap Star. Every Tuesday on the Nerds Review Network. Grab a taco, take a seat, pop a burrito, it's gonna get deep. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. And don't forget to hit that like button.